Hello there, it's Fabien and uh, welcome. I am here with somebody I love and adore and have known for a very long time. And uh, that is Nell, the Nell Shelby. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna have a conversation about what it's like to be uh, investing in yourself, what it's like to be uh, uh, in Bold Heart Business, what happens when you do something for yourself like this. But before that, Nell, I want everybody to know who you are. So briefly tell us what you do so we can get okay. some context. Well, thank you, Fabienne. I am so happy to be here. And um, so my name is Nell and I live in New York City. Um, and I've had a video production company for, I think it's about 18 years now. My production company is focused on filming dance. Dance is my specialty, is my niche, which actually also really was refined because of Fabienne. Um, I was sort of doing everything but realized that my love was dance. And so that's what my focus is on. I make documentary films about, specifically about dance education. Um, I make um, dance films, marketing films, and the probably my biggest bread and butter, the biggest thing that I do is, is film dance concerts um, in theaters all over New York City. A big client of mine is Jacob's Pillow Dance Festival in Beckett, Massachusetts, Vail Dance Festival in Vail, Colorado. And, um, you know, we'll film dance wherever anyone invites me yeah. and have grown my team over the years to have, um, we're all dancers that are doing what we love to do, mm -hmm. which is video. Yeah. So you and I have known each other for a very long time. How long do you think it's been now? Like 12? Oh, well, guess what? Gracie 12. turned 12 yesterday. Oh. And I do remember, um, I think we were working with you when she was born. Yeah, I, <laughs> so, went, to, I went to your baby shower at Sheila's apartment. You, yes, you did. You did. And so it probably was 2007, I think, that when, you know, when Christopher, my husband, for those of people that don't know, started working with you. Yeah, and then you joined the program as well to work on your own business. Yes. Uh, you did really well for yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. So you worked with me for a, a, a couple of years and yeah. then you went off and did life. Mm -hmm. And then we reconnected, uh, was it last fall? And yes. you said, I think it's time for me to come back. But I, I wanna, I, I think it's important to share the first round of when you started working with me, you went from what income? Is it okay to share numbers right away? I love sharing numbers. Okay, great. So you came to me the first time, like maybe like 10 years ago or whatever. Yeah, I think it was like 08 or 09. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were making what in your business back then, do you think? I think I might have been making under $100,000. Yeah. And, um, and just to give people an idea, you know, to be... The dance world um, that is very, very saturated in New York City, especially that's why I'm here. Um, it, you know, it has that sort of like um, I wouldn't call it poverty mindset, but I would say that there is not a lot of money flowing. They rely on a lot of grants and donors, and it's it's a not for profit situation. So, you know, the idea of even breaking a hundred thousand dollars is um, a pretty big deal. And, um, and I, and I, so I think before I started working with you, I was probably under a hundred thousand dollars. And then, you know, as we were working together, um, I really learned how to love marketing, which was a huge thing. And, um, so I sort of became a marketing machine and, and then broke marketing, loving marketing, uh, marketing that not like, I just want to clarify that, that we teach mm -hmm. how to do marketing in like a really lovely way. Would you agree? Yes. I mean, I probably shared the story 5,000 times is that, and, and I shared, I have a lot of interns and a lot of people that I mentor and I tell them that that's, I really, honestly, the first thing I say to them is, is marketing is, is so important, but I define what that means. And I, and I share your story about how you say, um, share your brownies. You know, it's like, if you make all the brownies and you keep them for yourself, you get really fat. <laughs> you also, you also, it's just not very loving. And if you share those brownies and share with people what you do, then, you know, you, so many wonderful things happen. And, and, and that's been something that I've just, a mindset of mine that I've just been continuing to share with others, even in my field, you know, like even, even in the dance world, like you can't hold tight, like all the dances you're making, you have to be able to show people. 
you were able to take these concepts of marketing and make very good money um, in the last few years. Are you are you willing to share the number you you took your business to before coming back last fall? Yes. So, um, I mean, also we have to say, I mean, I still find like all the binders that you gave me, you know, before digital, um, where it's like, uh, oh gosh, I can't even think of what some of them were called, but I would sit at the beach and read them about, um, you know, all of the things that you were teaching us about marketing and about growing your business and everything. So I've continued to really take those in and continue to practice them from 2000, you know, when I maybe stopped working with you in 2011 until last year. So a year ago, at that point, I think that I was at $630,000. Everybody and so, give her a yeah. high five into the camera, <laughs> right? <laughs> From less than 100 to 630000 in the dance video world. Right, like, right. Like that's huge, right? Yeah. Yeah, and also, you know, the, the important thing is is employing other people and that that this is, it made possibilities for other people's lives, you know, that they can be a dance videographer also, they can be a dance editor, they can they can do what they love to do and, and make money as well. Yeah. So. so you decided to come back. It was time for your new level of growth. And what are we shooting for now in terms of revenue? Well, I really definitely, um, it's interesting, you know, pre-COVID <laughs> situation. Um, I think my, I said my goal was like a million was like what was in my heart. But um, I think on paper, I, I think I, I think I have to look back, but I think it was like 850,000 or something. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like that was, that felt real to me. Um, and, and now I have to say, I was talking to my marketing team the other day and we were looking through my goals and which I know we'll probably talk about in a bit, but now in this COVID situation, even though I lost a ton of business, I've sort of grown it back and beyond. And now I would say they were, they were telling me the other day, like, no, I think you could probably hit a million by the end of the year. Yeah, there are, so I'm really glad you're sharing this because there are a lot of people who are in fear and panic uh with what's going on in the world and they don't realize that people have pivoted and i have had so many conversations with um bold heart business members that said well when covid first hit i took a dip but then right away you told you told me to pivot and you taught me how to move things online and you taught me how to keep my mental strength and 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 that's why i'm back up if not exceeding my pre-covid numbers can right. you share uh, just how being part of Bold Heart Business helped you and working with me helped you uh, with whether this storm, the, this uncertainty? Right. I mean, geez, we, you know, we're in the biggest health crisis since 1918. And right. um, this, is, this is, you know, coming from a very optimistic person like myself, this has been an interesting time to just not just go, oh, everything's going to be okay. You know, we have to be real about it. Like, um, we this is a time where we. Um, I mean, my clients are suffering. You know, makes. I hope I don't cry right now, but um, suffering meaning like creating art. Theaters are not open. Um, there's there's a lot of sadness going on right now. So just to bring you back though, like when March fifteenth. <laughs> I was actually in Jamaica on a trip with my family, even though everyone, if you think March 15th, that was probably not the right time to go to Jamaica, but I went and came back and quarantined all my business. I think, I think on the books, it was like $200,000 of business had been lost. Mm -hmm. um, whether it was postponed, maybe, or just completely lost. And I remember saying to you on a call, I just said, uh, you were talking about pivoting and I said, Fabian, I'm so exhausted. Like I've been working so hard for 18 years. Like maybe this is just like the universe saying, just slow down and take a moment and, you know, meditate, pray, write in your journal, be with your kids. And that is what I did. And I remember you said to me that for me, that's a pivot. <laughs> for you, that was, I remember that conversation. You were yeah. really like, Oh my God, I don't want to work so, so hard. And so yeah. everybody did it differently. And you needed that time to go within, to connect with your spiritual center, to then come out of the gates and just crushing it the last few months. 
Yeah, and I and I did take it in that you you had reported um, something about pivoting. You've been talking to us about pivoting. And it's interesting that word has not been in my vocabulary a lot, like pre-COVID. So I think I was also just like, what does that word mean? But I was listening to what, you know, listening to how to pivot, what that means, writing in my journal a lot, thinking and praying and going on the Q&A calls with um, all the leverage, the whole leverage group, um, business group. And, um, and then, you know, there was that one moment where I got that, a past client just reached out to me and said, we'd love for you to produce our co um, convocation. This is Teachers College with Columbia University. And I was like, there's no way. Like, what can I possibly do for my home? You know, I'm a videographer. Like, I should be out there. And um, when I, I just said, okay, let's talk. And I thought, there's no way she's going to hire me. Like, what am I going to offer? But she just, you know, she, I felt like she, she, in my mind, this woman is an angel um, because she obviously saw, saw that I could do this. And so I then, um, just like you do with us, <laughs> so because she saw that, I then was able to create a proposal and um, we produced this beautiful convocation for 2,000 students all over the world. Yeah, and you've been, like, this, this pivot that you made as a result of some of the coaching that you've gotten here has brought you, I mean, Juilliard has reached out to you, like all the big- New York like, City Center, the Joyce oh, Theater. <laughs> Lincoln oh, Center like, just booked. Congratulations, <laughs> right? This, I've seen this happen a year ago. Not yet, right? No, I mean, I feel, so also to help people to understand, so I went to school for dance and I went to school for broadcast video. So being um, like producing television was what I wanted to do. Um, I didn't know producing at the time, you know, I thought yeah. I wanted to just work in television. Um, but when live streaming happened and became a thing, and I started live streaming 10 years ago, I realized, and I love live performance because that's what I, what I do. And so then live streaming is like mixing shows live, meaning like cutting to different cameras and just having that live feel then that's what I was like, oh, I love doing this. And so now that's what we're doing. So I feel like when you kept talking about pivoting and opening my mind to that and, and just like, you know, calling my accountability buddy for people that don't know what that is. It's your bold heart friend or bold heart colleague or bold heart lovey person that holds you accountable. Every day. Every day. Every day. And I called Elena starting March 15th every day. And I was on those Q and A calls and I was listening to what you were saying and it just opened my mind and, and something actually, which I think is a big part of Bold Heart, someone interviewed me a few weeks ago and they said, no, seriously, like do all videographers and editors, can they all start producing like shows, these virtual shows that you're doing? Like, you know, cause I have these skills. Um, we all have these skills as videographers and editors to be able to do this for people. And I said, gosh, I don't know. Like I literally w innocently was like, gosh, I don't know. She's like, no, they can't. And, but I think a lot of that is because of bold heart of like thinking outside the box, thinking. Mindset first methodology, yeah. right? We don't show you how to do something until we expand your capacity to really hear it and believe that you can do it because otherwise it will mm -hmm. fall on deaf ears. Right. Um, now, um, as we wrap up, what are, what do you, what do you believe are the most important elements of why Bolt Heart business helps these hundreds of women make more money and grow their impact and create things like you have that are is just unthinkable to others and ast astonishing results. What are the aspects of the program that mm -hmm. you find are incredibly valuable? Well, before I joined Leverage a year ago, I felt like I was going to my team for help. I felt I was going to my husband for help. I felt I was like, you know, crying to my mom for help, right? And, um, and then when I talked to Caitlin, who was on your team, and we talked about Leverage, and because I just said, you know, Caitlin, I just want to go to the mindset retreat. I'm going to be good. She's like, let's talk about Leverage a little more. And I think that that 
what really sold me on it in terms of why I wanted to come back is because of the support, because of the camaraderie, because of the, like the high level support. You know, I'm not just talking like someone being like, you're going to be okay. Like, or, or let's talk through this, like the high level support. Like, I, I just want to tell a little story. Like last week when we were on the Q and A call, I was really struggling because Lincoln Center just called me to do some work. And um, I feel very busy this October and I feel like I have a full plate. And you said to me, you know, you gave me practical business advice, which was like, write down all the things that could go wrong and then flip, you know, and then work through that and troubleshoot from there of like how to create success in those, in that work. So Lincoln Center just booked me yesterday and for five, five live streams, five shoots, two camera on the plaza. Um, and I, I just felt like if I was just telling my husband that if, if I didn't have that, I would have been in my head. I would have been saying to everyone, I would have probably been like whining, like, oh, what am I going to do? You know, and I, so I feel like that is just an example of being able to go to these people, whether it's my bold heart friends, colleagues, or you or Derek, to be able to just say, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. Yeah. And need I high level. To you last week, like, I don't really care what else you have on your, I didn't say it like that, but what else you have on your calendar? We will always make room for Lincoln Center. Oh my gosh, I know. Be practical. Um, yeah. I, I, there's a woman, at least one woman, who is watching this right now, who has been on the fence about joining us who has been on the fence about believing that she can create results like you're mm -hmm. creating. Mm -hmm. And she's like, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? What would you say to her knowing what it's like inside mm -hmm. about what to do next? It sounds so simple, but I would just say, just go for it. <laughs> just see, you can even just go in and see and then give yourself time in there to because you know it takes sometimes a little bit of time to just get your groove of like how many q a calls should i you know if you're too bit if you're feeling too busy you know how many q a calls should i go on you don't have to do everything i remember caitlin said to me do this how it works for you yeah. and and it took me a little time to get into that groove um and and not feel like oh no i'm missing a q a call but i would just say you know there's there's, there's really no turning back. I mean, I, I, I said on our leverage your time um, two day workshop, I, I remember <laughs> I said, um, I feel like I'm paying to have friends. And I know that sounds so silly, but I think it's true because we cannot rely on our just like girlfriends to help us work through our business. And the entrepreneurs, we have so much energy and so many ideas. And we really need the help of these other women and you to be able to focus mm -hmm. and direct our attention and prioritize ourselves in the right direction, mm -hmm. whatever that may be for each person. So. And as a result of this, you are on your way to your first million, Mel Shelby. Like. Yeah. I, I, okay. So I was trying to calculate in my head today. Um, I think this month alone, I'm bringing in $300,000. So <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like it's and just you amazing. Have, and you have a gorgeous marriage and you have two yes. gorgeous children and yes. like you're not, you know, it's not the idea of what some people think is being a multiple six figure a month. When I say to somebody like, you're going to end up making 20 K a month when you join us, 50 K, a hundred K, they're like a hundred K I, I will lose my life. And now I'll say like, no, like Nell, like she has a great life. <laughs> the 300 K a month. <laughs> I still exercise. I rode my Peloton bike this morning. I still yeah. meditate. I still, you know, have, yeah. I mean, you know, I feel very busy this month, but also the thing that we didn't talk about is like, you know, in this pivot, I feel like I'm almost starting a, a new business, but with a lot of knowledge behind, you know, and with a lot of support. So, so there's, a, there's a little bit of a like startup feel. Um, 
and but but having the all those tools leveraging your time just thinking that through oh my gosh that was such that was mind-blowing two days yeah. you know I'm so proud for you I'm so deeply proud for you Nell and I hope you're proud of yourself you are I, I, I want to thank you for sharing your story with us today so inspirational and I just know that there's at least one person who has tears rolling down her face and you've just given her the faith to believe in herself to believe that it's not just for other people but she can do it too and mm -hmm. uh and, and she'll reach out and and say okay i heard nell's story sign me up i want to get to meet her and 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 continue to be inspired by all the bold hearts thank you so much nell and congratulations thank you fabian thank you <laughs> thank you, you too